Hello there and welcome to Can Sanity. Today we're going to be making cinnamon buns because it's a dreary day out there and so it's a good day to be inside baking. So let's get started. Okay, so making cinnamon buns is really easy. Um, all you need is some eggs, whole milk, salt, um, the yeast, sugar, flour, and butter. And the secret ingredient is cornstarch. And you want to use cornstarch when you're making cinnamon buns because it will give you that fluffy but chewy texture. And the reason why you get that is because the cornstarch interacts with the protein in the flour, which, which relaxes the gluten and then gives you that texture. So um, now I'll just put it all together and you'll see how easy it is to make the cinnamon bun dough. Okay, so in order for your yeast, and I'm using instant yeast in this recipe, to um, start working quickly, you want to use a warm liquid. And so you want to warm your um, milk to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And I put, mine in the, I put my milk in the microwave, and then I just use my, um, my uh, thermometer to measure the temperature. And it was a little bit over. This is a kinetic th thermometer, so no battery. I have to just shake it up, and, and it's good to go. And so um, I'm just going to test the temperature because I've been talking here for a little bit and see if, if it's gone down a little bit. And it has. So I'm just going to pop that in the microwave again just to warm it up because it's only at 95. Okay, your three eggs are going to be whisked up. And then you're going just 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 uh, a little bit, and they're at room temperature when you're mixing this dough up. And your butter is room temperature as well, even slightly softened, and uh, just diced um, into small chunks. And I like to use a scale to weigh, to measure out my uh, butter. Uh, I just it's more accurate. So I it's six ounces of cubed unsalted butter or 12 tablespoons. And I'm going to give that a stir. That's my instant yeast. You can add a little bit of your sugar in there too. That's my half a cup of sugar that's going in my whole, um, in the dough. But I sometimes add a little bit to here while this is just um, waiting to be added to the flour. So then in your mixing bowl, you're going to add your four and a half cups of flour. Half a cup of cornstarch. The remaining part of your sugar. Give that a stir. And then you can add your egg to here. This is three eggs and I just uh, whisked them up. And add that all to your flour. Give that a stir just to get started. left the salt out because I put that in last. And I'm going to attach it to your KitchenAid spoon mixer if you have it. If you don't have it, then you're just going to mix that up by hand or with a spoon. Uh, this is the dough hook. And lock it on that side and just start it on low. If you start it up on high, then you're just going to have a cloud of flour. So. Just start that up, get that mixing. And once that's mixing, then you can start, you can add your salt. And then you're going to add your, your butter one, one cube at a time. And then you'll see how the, the dough ball will form. 
So my butter is softened. I put it in the microwave for just about 10 seconds. And uh, just, just so that it's softened. See how the, the dough is coming together? So it turns out now that, now that it, there's not a lot of loose flour in there, I can turn it up. Okay, so all my, I'm just going to shut this off so you can hear me better. All my butter has been added and now I'm going to knead the dough for another 7 to 10 minutes. So that means just turn that dough on and just uh, keep it on like low like that and just let it do its magic. Okay, this has been mixing for about 5 minutes and you see how the dough is coming away from the bowl? That's perfect. This is making the absolute perfect dough. Now if it's tacky and it's not coming away from the, the bowl, you can add a little bit of flour and so that it'll just maybe come together a little, little better for you. But this is coming together absolutely perfect. Okay, so that's been kneading the dough for 10 minutes and look how nice that is. It's all uh, formed into a dough bowl. And so I'm just going to take the, the dough hook off and then I can just unscrew my bowl. <laughs> I got slick hands. <laughs> Never mind getting the bowl off right now. <laughs> Just gonna take the uh, the dough off with my hands, and you know it's when it you knead the dough, you activate that gluten, and so then the, the dough, it's just one cohesive ball, and this is just a nice soft dough. It's not too tacky. It's it's just a nice soft dough. So that's the dough. That's what you want. That's the result you want. And so then I'm going to put it in a buttered bowl. You can even take the dough and just kind of get the butter on top. Just so it just has it, it won't dry out. And then just put that um, in the bowl. Just going to wash my hands here. egg in that dough so I just don't want to touch too many things with eggy hands and so now you're going to cover that that bowl with some saran wrap and just loosely and then the trick to getting this to rise in a timely manner is to put some boiling water this is boiling water from into a pan, a Pyrex pan. This is a, just a loaf pan. You can use any any Pyrex pan of this shape, or any non-breakable or um, tempered tempered um, glass that you can add hot hot water to, um, or use a metal pan. And now we're going to take this and this, and we're going to pop this in our an oven. Our oven is cool; it's it's not heated or anything. The, but by being that enclosure. Uh, in the oven enclosure, the heat of this um, pan will help warm the oven and it'll proof your dough better, to proof your dough easier. You could just leave this on your um, countertop, but it just this will just facilitate the proofing of the dough. Now you're going to let that uh, rise until it's doubled in size. 
Okay, while your dough is rising, you can prepare the pan that you're going to cook it in. And so this is a 13 by 9 inch um, pan of glass pyrex. And you're going to line it with foil in this direction first with overhang, because you're going to use that to lift your, your buns out of the pan. And then another foil that you're just going to press into the corners and so that you have the foil all around the pan. So that when your, your uh, cinnamon buns are done, you're just going to lift that right out of your pan. So now you want to lightly butter with some unsalted butter uh, the bottom and the sides of the pan. So. You could also melt the butter and just use a pastry brush. Okay, now you're set for when your, your dough is rolled out and made into buns. Okay, so I just took my um, dough out of the oven that was in, in the oven with that water, uh, just to, to proof it and look how beautiful that is. And so let's take the plastic wrap off of that, move it in the side, and I'm just going to add, make the filling. So the filling has um, brown sugar, uh, a cup and a quarter of brown sugar and you're going to do a table and a half of cinnamon and then you're going to use just a quarter teaspoon of salt you're just going to mix that up Either use your hands or just stir it up. Set that aside and now I've just softened my butter so that I can just um, spread it easily on the dough. So I've just softened that. I just had uh, butter in the uh, unsalted butter and I just uh, put it in the microwave for 15 seconds. If you melt it a little further, that's okay. Just make sure that if you make it hot, that you cool it back to room temperature because you don't want to put the hot, hot butter on your dough. I'm just going to get some flour. Okay, so I just needed to get some flour there. This is my pastry board that I've had for, oh geez, 25 years. And so I just spread some flour on my pastry board and I have to showcase this beautiful rolling pin that uh, my uncle Bob Kelly made for me and I'm just so pleased that he made me this beautiful rolling pin and uh, you'll see it in a lot of videos. Okay, so now you're just going to take your dough out of your bowl. This is just turned out just beautiful. This is dough. And uh, I'm just going to put that down. Now you're going to roll this out into a uh, rectangle. And then you're going to spread the butter on and then the cinnamon sugar and then you're going to roll it up. So I know that this board is approximately the size of the rectangle that, I, that you'll need. And so just take your rolling pin. Oh, this is beautiful dough. And just start rolling. Thank you so much, Bob, for making me this beautiful rolling pin. It's lovely. It's the first time I've used it. So you're going to have a rectangle and you know if you roll it thinner then you're going to get a few more turns of your um, dough with your cinnamon sugar if you roll it thicker you'll just have less filling so in your in each layer or in each cinnamon bun layer so i guess you know, the filling is the same but you'll have thicker layers i guess is what i want to say so this is beautiful. What's nice about using a rolling pin like this 
is it's easier to clean. You don't have a rolling pin that has the handles. You can get some gunk inside those handles. So it's just beautiful. Rolls like a dream. Okay, so that's about the size that I like to make my, my rectangle. Okay, and now you're going to add your butter. And I have a spoon because if you don't have a pastry brush, you can, you can just use a spoon and roll it on, uh, spread it that way. Or if you have a pastry brush, you can just spread it on this way. So you're going to go uh, within about a centimeter of the edge of your dough. You can go at the edge that you're going to start at, you can put it right to the edge. Start rolling that is. And now cinnamon dough, cinnamon bun dough is really sturdy. so. You don't have to be too gentle when you're spreading on your butter. And there was uh, two ounces, four tablespoons of butter here. Okay. And now you're just going to take your cinnamon sugar and um, just, just mixing it up again with my hands. Just spread that on. If you want to change it up, you can add a little bit of cardamom in this mix as well, like a quarter teaspoon. And it just gives it a really nice, different flavor to your cinnamon bun. So, see I just dumped that because it's, when you have a layer, a good layer on, you can just spread the rest with your hands. This is the, roll, the side that I'm going to start rolling at, so I'm just going to bring that right to the edge. Try to keep, if you have a thicker bit of cinnamon filling, then just put that to the middle because you don't, it'll just otherwise just fall out at the sides. So you see I'm not exact here, that's okay. Okay, so now you're going to just start rolling. My brown sugar was a little bit old, so that's why I have a little bit of clumps in here. That's all going to melt up when it's baked. So then you just want to kind of turn, pinch, kind of turn the dough in. Just You want it to be a relatively tight roll. Now you can cut this into 12 so you'd have smaller buns or you can cut this into 8 for larger buns. I'm just going to do 8 today. And I'm kind of tucking it at the sides as I'm rolling because it always is a little looser at the end. So, And then you have a little bit of butter on the edge there that will just kind of seal the deal. And So now you're ready to cut. Okay, so I have a sharp knife and I'm just going to saw rather than push so I don't squish all my layers. And then I'm going to just cut it in half, then cut it in half again. And then I'm going to cut each of these in half. Okay. And then you're going to put the cut side down in your pan. And I see this is a little loose, like sometimes I will give it a little pinch there. And just that it doesn't, I turn the seam so that it's facing the, um, the pan. So if it just breaks open a little bit, it's going to go towards the pan. Okay, so now you can just cover this up and let it rise again 
for an hour uh, until it's doubled. Now it doesn't have to completely double because it's going to rise up in the oven. So uh, let it rise for an hour and then uh, bake it or you can cover it up with saran wrap and uh, put it in your fridge for up to 24 hours and then you can bring it to room temperature and then bake it the next day. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put this in the fridge and, and, and come back in the morning and, and bake that. I'm also making some twice baked potatoes today, so I want to get to that. Okay, here are my buns that have been on the counter for an hour after having been in the fridge overnight. Don't they look wonderful just like that? And I preheated my oven to 350. And so Okay, it's been baking for 350 for already 25 minutes. I always check to see how brown it is on top because if it's brown, then I will put some tin foil on top and uh, then you bake it for another 15 minutes. So let's just take a peek. Okay, that's already looking brown. So you can see that's brown. So we just I don't want that to get too dark on top, so I'm just going to put that on top. And bake it for another 15. Okay, so these uh, buns were um, baked for 45 minutes and look how gorgeous they've turned out. I'm just going to let it sit in the pan for 10 minutes and then I can take them out of the pan. Okay, so this is cooling enough in the uh, pan so we can take the tin foil and we just then lift it right out and out of the pan. And now you're going to have to cool your um, the cinnamon buns for 30 minutes before you can ice them. But uh, so we'll let that cool for 30 more minutes. I'm just going to make the icing or the glaze. So I have one and a half cups of icing sugar that I'm just going to pour into the bowl. And I have four ounces of uh, cream cheese. Just add that. And you're going to need to add some vanilla. So about a teaspoon is good. And then you can add some milk to thin it, but we're gonna see how how thick it is just with that. So just, I have the paddle attachment on the mixer. Just start off slow. And the cream cheese is uh, softened slightly, so this the kitchen is very warm because I had the oven on. So I just had it at uh, all over the counter for an hour and a half, and that softened enough, but you could also soften it a little bit in the microwave. Okay, so that's what the icing looks like. I'm just going to blend it a little bit without adding any milk. So if I bring that up, you can see that I don't want to add a lot of milk. I don't want it, want it to be too runny, but it's not quite the consistency that I need for a glaze. So I'll just scrape the bottom here a little bit. I'm just going to add a teaspoon of milk, not even. It's quite runny already. So just a, just a little smidgen of milk. Okay, so depending on how you like your icing, 
This is almost at drizzling consistency when it comes off the spoon as if you're going to drizzle it on. So I'd like to add just a little bit more. If you like the icing that thick, you can leave it that thick and just pipe, pipe it on. I'm just going to add just a little bit more milk. Not a lot. Because that's pretty good. it and it drips off the, off the spoon yeah that's nice okay so the cinnamon buns have cooled for 30 minutes they're still a bit warm which is just gonna be so tasty I'm just gonna put some glaze on this one for the cameraman he's over there drooling and so I'm just gonna take some of the glaze and I'm just look at the drizzle consistency of that so I'm just going to drizzle that on like that be as generous as you look like and look how amazing that looks. So I hope that you are enjoying the Can Sanity videos and that you do subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to check out cansanity.com to check out this recipe of cinnamon buns and all the other great recipes that are waiting there for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.